Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today, I want to talk about plateaus. So overcoming a plateau can be really hard, right? Sometimes it feels like you're trying everything or working really hard and you just keep hitting this wall over and over. And as someone that's been in the fun game scene for a long time, I've also ran into a bunch of my own plateaus. So I want to kind of share some of my plateaus that I've been able to successfully overcome and then give some tips on how to overcome plateaus in general. So the cool thing about being new at something is that you're much easily able to rapidly improve. So when I'm learning a fighting game, I'll first learn, you know, the combos and the basic knockdown situations. And those are generally like pretty easy to learn compared to stuff like matchups or the intricacies of the game. So you'll see a lot of improvement really fast. And eventually you get to the point where you feel like your improvement slows down and you feel like you've kind of hit a plateau. This kind of happened to me. So I started in the fighting game scene with Super Street Fighter 4 and I felt like I got to intermediate level pretty quickly but I, I could never beat the top level players in our like local scene it felt like everything that would work uh, against the intermediate players that would do would never work against like the high level players that that would play against right looking back there, there's a few issues right one like kind of had this like pretty big ego so I think that kind of got in the way I would like look at tournament footage of like the best Sakuras for example I played Sakura back then and I would notice like why are they doing this what I'm doing is so much more optimal yet they were the ones on stage um, and I wasn't right so I kind of like disregarded a lot of advice and uh, other gameplay that I've seen and there's one situation in particular that kind of like broke the cam the straw on the camel's back what, what what the fuck is that phrase it made me realize the error of my ways <laughs> So, okay, with Sakura, let's say I do a safe jump or I do a combo and I, I will land this and I'll either rotate between doing a jump in into another normal to like frame trap them because, you know, a lot of people at lower levels are really mashy, right? You know, if they're if they're blocking, I'll just run up and throw them, right? So this is this is my basic mix up is I'll either do a normal and then I'll throw or I'll do a normal and then I'll attack, right? I'm like, I got a true 50-50 here. It turns out that's not the case, right? And when I would watch like really high level Japanese players, they would do something like this, where they would do a jump normal into this Tatsu. I'm like, why would I ever do that? This doesn't make any sense. It doesn't even combo. You can get mashed, you can get reversal thrown. You can do all this other stuff. Like this is so stupid. I'm a better player. I remember playing against the best player in Buffalo at the time, his name was Jug. I was like getting destroyed. I didn't know what to do. You know, I was at my wits end and I'm like you know what that stupid thing that the japanese player has done like i'm gonna try it for no reason right all right and so it looks something like this one did <laughs> and i got hit and if you know anything about sakura that that's like a 400 damage combo the fact that that worked I, I i couldn't believe it after recognizing like why that happened it turns out i've just been a you know a dumbass this whole time right the best option the most optimal option to do like after a block jumping is you just do uh throw tech but the throw tech in this game is actually just uh it looks like a crouch short and you delay it enough so you don't get hit by a frame trap so if someone's doing like a jump in the throw or jumping into a normal it beats both these options and i was like so short excited I couldn't see that implementing this one thing it, it wasn't just it increased my win percent it helped me understand like a, a few key tenets of fighting games one don't let arrogance get in the way of improvement like if high level players are doing something that seems bad in your head there actually might be a reason for it and you also need to tailor the options that you do against your opponent while that strategy might not work really well against a beginner player because beginner players are just mashing all the time it would work really well against advanced level opponent and so making that my shift stage was part of how I started to beat the advanced level players. Like just because something seems like unoptimal at first, it might actually there actually might be a lot of merit behind it. This happened with me and Daru too. Like but I was able to recognize it a lot quicker. Like Daru would do things like empty jump JD. And I'm like, empty jump JD, that makes no sense. Why would I ever do that? And I swallowed the pride and I was like, let me try it out. And of course it's really good because it catches stuff like fuzzy mash and uh fuzzy block, right? I can can keep applying the same lesson over and over which is really beneficial when i when i moved to pittsburgh i used to play against this really good player he, he played ken but he played a few other shows and i could never beat this guy he always like would beat me and i i get really pissed off i'm like man i'm stuck i don't know how to beat this guy and what would happen is every time he get knocked down he would either do dp or he would do um ken has like this this carrow throw where you can throw but you can throw uh, from a further distance 
Yeah. So he'd mix up between those two options, and I felt like I was always guessing wrong, right? Like, I tried to guess the DP, and it turned out to be a throw because I was just sitting there and blocking, and, you know, vice versa, right? I quit for the life of me. I'm, I kept thinking, I just need to guess better. I just need to guess better. I just need to guess better. And I could not guess right against this guy. And I couldn't figure out for the longest time how to win. And then the way I broke the plateau was not because I was able to guess better. It was because I was able to think of things in different perspective. If you're not right next to Ken on his wake up, you don't have to worry about that. So if you just like go walk in, walk out, you can bait both those options, right? The other thing I recognize, like, right, if you if you just walk up and you do a delayed throw tech, if they DP, you block, you get a full punish. And if they throw tech, you just get a throw tech, right? Making that mental shift, learning to approach the game in like a different lens and recognize that oftentimes it's not a true 50-50. There's other things you can do or other things to avoid that situation. Expanded my mind on like how to approach fighting games as opposed to, hey, you just need to guess better because I still haven't figured that one out yet. All right, so uh, just a, a few other plateaus that I think I've gone through, but I, I want to discuss them. So I used to have like really bad tournament anxiety and kind of the way I got through that was I just learned how like a healthy lifestyle, you know, working out beforehand, getting enough sleep, that sort of thing really helped me play better. And I got better tournament results because of that. Right after I started working, I would uh, like after I graduated grad school, I would go to work and I'd come home and I'd be like so tired from work and I'd try to go online. I just get salty and I felt like my improvement stalled out a lot and I I learned to focus on practicing with a purpose in the sense that like instead of just going online and just mindlessly playing I would one try to concentrate my time and not you know instead of playing like four hours mindlessly play like one or two hours with with purpose like if I was like too tired to focus on a match I, I would use the resources I had to you know maybe lab something out or maybe do something that was more enjoyable but also work towards my improvement as well and I think the last plateau that I remember getting over I don't think I've been stuck at a really at a plateau since I started Grand Blue Versus. I feel like I've continually gotten better. But when I first started Grand Blue Versus, I used to, I was a habitual blame my character, right? I always blame my character for loss. I probably played like six different characters. I'm like, I need the right character so I can always play the best matchup. And then I eventually said, screw it. Like if my goal is to be one of the best at fighting games, then I just need to be better, right? Even if I can blame the character for a loss, I shouldn't because that just hinders my own progress. And if I'm truly good enough, then I can just outplay them. Focusing on that is a lot more productive than being like, oh, I lost because of a bad matchup. You don't get anything valuable uh, improvement wise. So yeah, I, I, I'd say those are the major plateaus I made it through, but I, I kind of want to say one, there's like a common theme here, right? Generally, it's not like I started doing X move, right? It's more of like either I started doing X move and therefore I approach the game differently, or it's because I do stuff outside. It's more mentality based, right? It's not, you know, I picked the top tier and now I've broken a plateau. Sure, I might do better because I picked a top tier, but you're not addressing the underlying causes, right? How does this apply to you, right? Maybe my examples kind of helped you, but I want to give you some general information on plateaus, right? The first thing I think is uh, what I would call a false plateau. So a lot of people will say, I'll see this on Twitter. Someone will be like, I just want a tournament. And then a week later, they'll do bad in a tournament and they'll be like, I've hit a plateau. One, that's like, you know, you need to take the average of results and you can't jump to conclusions too early. But I think people also like, they recognize how quickly they improved. And then later on, they won't improve as quickly. And it'll be discouraging, right? So here, let's take this example, right? So this is what a typical improvement curve looks like, right? <laughs> and as you can see, it's not flat. There's a thing called diminishing returns, whereas the more you practice something, there's only so good you can get at something. And so maybe the additional 1,000 hours might not result in the same improvement the last 1,000 hours did. So this is a chart of Chinese fluency in language learning. And as you can see, the first so many words you learn uh, results in a lot of improvement because those are the most common words. But as you learn, start to learn the more obscure words, you start to get away from the low hanging fruit, your fluency isn't gonna improve as fast. This is an example, uh, it's not quite the same chart, but this is an example of my chess uh, puzzle. I've been playing a little chess on the side and I pretty much exclusively do puzzles. You know, I'll play like a few a day. And you notice it's also not a flat curve as well, right? It's more of like, it's really quick in the beginning. And then around here, it starts to fly in, but there's still improvement, right? And I'm at the highest I've been, which is around 
$2350. And it's all about consistently improving over time. Because you can see there's some peaks and then some valleys, right? But the whole point is that as long as you're improving over time, you're starting to learn concepts and you're starting to learn things in fighting games, you have to trust the process. A another example is let's uh let let's bring up Guilty Gear rating update. This is my rating update. So it's very similar ELO um, concept to chess. I'm at 2200 ELO for Bridget, but I was stuck at 2000 ELO for probably the last couple months. So my ELO stayed stagnant for a couple months, but I knew that I was improving, right? I knew that I was integrating new combos. I was integrating new ideas. I was trying out new things. And when I'm doing that, my score might not necessarily improve, but I can feel my gameplay improving. And I know that once, once I get all this stuff down, that I'll be a better player. And that it eventually showed it just took a while. So I don't think that's a plateau. That's more of a result of the actions I was doing, right? It's, it's a necessary step in order to get better. My advice here would be if you feel that way, right? Trust your gut. And if you feel like you're improving and working stuff officially, then you probably are. It's probably not a plateau issue. You really need to trust the process if you think that's the case and know that if you are doing the right things that you'll eventually get better. That being said, if you feel like the opposite, right? You're not doing the right things or if, or if you feel like you're not actually getting better, I think there's a few things you could do, right? One, I think you should try new things. Um, <laughs> it's actually funny enough, I've been plateaued in my uh, my list for working out partly due to COVID, but partly because I, I wasn't sure. And so I actually um, I, I joined a new gym and I got a uh, free personal training session. I was kind of telling them about my routine and it, it just clicked with me. I was telling them about my routine. I've, I've been doing the same routine for like three years. And I was telling them about like I plateaued doing the same routine for three years. I'm just like, oh my God, like how stupid could I have been? <laughs> I need to be doing different things. And like, that's exactly what he pointed out. So yeah, it can happen outside of uh, fighting games too, right? So try new things, right? You can't just expect to keep doing the same thing over and over and get the same results. Um, so what does that mean? There's a bunch of different things. You can you can have people review footage. You can be trying a new character. You can try out new strategies. You could try out new training regimens. Instead of playing ranked, you could hit up people for long sets or, or vice versa. The other thing I, I'd recommend if you really don't feel like you're improving is make sure you're actually learning about the game when you play, not just going on ranked and autopiling. Breaking plateaus, they require you to have effective training. So you know, make sure you're thinking about the game, looking at where your weaknesses are and making sure you're correcting them through, you know, through lab time or watching like really high level players of the character you play and correcting that, right? For a lot of new players, if, if you're newer and you feel like you're stuck, you know, oftentimes this comes down to like very basic strategy or execution, right? So in a Street Fighter sense, you know, are you anti-airing? Are you doing your optimal punishes, right? Uh, in a Guilty Gear sense, maybe it's, are you doing the right combos? And are you, uh, after you land your combo, are you doing the right mix-up? Are you just getting thrown out of your mix-up? You know, stuff like that. Um, the last thing I'd say is, you know, make sure you maintain your motivation. If you're burning out on the game, you're not gonna be improving. Fighting games should be fun. So make sure you have fun while playing. You know, I don't know what that looks like for you, but if you're, playing a character you don't enjoy or if you're doing a training regimen you don't enjoy you probably need to switch it up everyone's gonna have times when they they don't enjoy the game like if i'm labbing something out so i can do really well in a tournament i might not enjoy that but i'll enjoy the tournament win, right you can take breaks but make sure those breaks are productive right right make sure you're either curing burnout or you're reevaluating your strategy uh etc etc so anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know what, down in the comments below if you know if you have some additional advice for plateaus or if you feel like you're stuck at a plateau and or what has helped you um, move forward from that plateau, right? And as always, guys, please consider like, sharing, and subscribing. Helps me make more videos like this. And if you want to see more educational content like this, like, sharing, and subscribing is the best way to do so because it'll encourage me to make more videos like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.